Hi guys, so this is the reading news time. I noticed that it's such a long time since I did a last one. So in this video today, I decided to do a news about a very controversial issue around the world. Like not only is it occurring right now in my country, but it is also worldwide. It's like really widespread, and it is global warming, as you can see in the screen on the screen. So let's get started with the national traffic news today. Is global warming real? Scientific consensus is overwhelming. The planet is getting warmer, and humans are behind it. In recent years, global warming and climate change have been the subject of a great deal of political controversy, controversy, especially in the U.S. But as the science become clearer and consensus grows, impossible to ignore. Debate is moving away from whether humans are causing warming and toward questions about how best to respond. Temperatures rising. Evidence of rising temperatures is pervasive and striking. Um, we have a new word here. It is pervasive, I suppose. So it means, especially of an unwelcome influence or physical effect spreading widely throughout an area or a, a group of people. And striking thermometer records kept over the past century and a half showed Earth's average temperature has risen more than a degree Fahrenheit, zero dot nine degrees Celsius, and about twice that in parts of the Arctic. That doesn't mean temperatures haven't fluctuated among regions of the globe or between seasons and times of day. But by analyzing average temperatures all over the world, scientists have demonstrated an unmistakable, unmistakable upward trend. This trend is part of climate change, which many people consider synonymous with global warming. Scientists prefer to use climate change when describing the complex shifts now affecting our planet's weather and climate systems. Climate change encompasses not only raising average temperatures, but also extreme weather events, shifting wildfire, wildlife populations and habitats, raising seas, and a range of other impacts. All of these changes are emerging as humans continue to add heat, trapping greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. How is climate change measured? Although we can look at the thermometers going back thousands of years, we do have other records, records that help us figure out what temperatures were like in the distant past. Past, for example, trees store information about the climate in the place they are rooted. Each year, trees grow thicker and form new rings. In warmer and wetter years, the the rings are thicker. Old trees and and wood can tell us about conditions hundreds or even thousands of years ago. Windows on the past are also buried in lakes and oceans. Pollen, particles, and dead creatures fall to the bottom of oceans and lakes each year, forming sediments. Sediments contain a wealth of information about what was in the air and water when they fell. Scientists reveal this record, record by inserting hollow tubes into the mud to collect layers of sediment going back millions of years. For a direct look at the atmosphere of the past, scientists drew a course through the Earth, through the Earth's polar ice sheets. Tiny bubbles trapped in the ice are actually samples from the Earth's past atmosphere, frozen in time. That's how we know that the concentrations of greenhouse gases since the Industrial Revolution are higher than they've been for hundreds of thousands of years. Computer models help scientists to understand the Earth's climate or long-term weather patterns. Models also allow scientists to make predictions about the future climate by simulating how the atmosphere and ocean and oceans absorb energy from the sun and transport it around the globe. Globe, we are the reason. Several factors affect how much of the sun's energy reaches Earth's surface, and how much of that energy gets absorbed. Those include greenhouse gases, particles in the atmosphere from volcanic eruptions, for example, and changes in energy coming from the sun itself. Climate models are designed to take such factors into account. For example, models have found that changes 
in solar, in, radi in radiance, and volcanic aerosols have contributed only about 2% of the recent warming of effect over 250 years. The balance comes from greenhouse gases and other human caused factors such as land use changes or burning fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas. The speed and duration, duration of this recent warming is remarkable as well. Volcanic eruptions, as an example, emit particles that temporarily cool the Earth's surface but they have no lasting effect beyond a few years. Events like El Nino also work on fairly short and predictable cycles. On the other hand, the types of global warming fluctuations that have contributed to ice ages are current cycles of hundreds of thousands of years. So the answer to the question, is global warming real, is yes. Nothing other than a rapid rise of greenhouse gas emissions from human activity can fully explain the dramatic and relatively recent rise in global average temperatures. So that's, so that's the answer. The answer to the question is global warming real. So the answer, so the answer is yes, as I've uh, mentioned earlier, because of the amount of greenhouse gases emitted into the atmosphere causing climate change, which accelerated a lot of factors like, uh, as I've said before, is, um, where is it? Here. Raising temperature, sea levels, and also extreme weather events like drowns, wildfires, and floods as well, and also shifting and accelerating the wildlife extinction or of some species extinction due to the loss of the tropical forests. So that's a very severe and I think the governments and authorities all over the world should take this problem seriously because once climate change become more severe and become like a very propl problematic things problem in the world then it's too late to take any action so you need to start up right now so thank you so much for listening to me reading this news and i'll see you tomorrow bye bye